In the days of the Great Darkness, when Morgoth and Ungoliant had snatched the light of Valinor, a shadow befell upon Arda. Feanor, upon hearing the dire news of his father's slaying and the theft of the Silmarils by Morgoth's hand, could no longer endure the Valar's banishment. Thus, he ventured beneath the tower of the Mindon Eldalieva, in the great square of Tyrion, and there he spoke with ardent zeal, beseeching his kin to follow him into Middle-earth. With the retake of the Silmarils as their ultimate goal, they would wage war against Morgoth and avenge Finwë's grievous fate. Why, O oh people of the Noldor, why should we longer serve the jealous Valar, who cannot keep us nor even their own realm secure from their enemy? And though he be now their foe, are not they and he of one kin? Vengeance calls me hence, but even were it otherwise, I would not dwell longer in the same land with the kin of my father's slayer and of the thief of my treasure. Yet I am not the only valiant in this valiant people. And have ye not all lost your king? And what else have ye not lost, cooped here in a narrow land between the mountains and the sea? Fair shall the end be, though long and hard shall be the road. Say farewell to bondage, but say farewell also to ease. Say farewell to the weak, say farewell to your treasures. More still shall we make. Journey light, but bring with you your swords. For we will go further than Orimer, endure longer than Pulkas. We will never turn back from pursuit. After Morgoth, to the ends of the earth. In the end, Feanor's words proved too potent, and a large number of the Noldor pledged their allegiance to him. But consumed by his unyielding pride and wrath towards Morgoth, Feanor and his seven sons swore a dreadful oath. It was a vow that none should break, and none should take, for it invoked the name of Iluvatar, and summoned the everlasting darkness upon them if they failed to keep it. These terrible words turned into deeds soon after, and the large number of the Noldor, led by Feanor and his seven sons, set out the northeast and came to Alqualonde on the shores of Valinor, stronghold of the Falmari. Knowing that his choices were few, Feanor asked the Teleri for their ships, but they refused, letting him know that their boats were products of their hearts, just as the Silmarils were to the Noldor. And not wanting to defy the will of the Valar, they attempted to persuade the Noldor to reconsider and stay in Amman, invoking an ancient friendship. But the Noldor started taking the ships by force, and now, angered Teleri, also began to threaten the Noldor with rocks and arrows. And they threw many of Feanor's followers out of the ships in an attempt to block the harbour. Then the Noldor drew swords, and the Teleri their bows, and blood was shed on the streets of Swanhaven. Thrice the host of Feanor were driven back, and many were slain upon either side. But the vanguard of the Noldor were succoured by Fingon, with the foremost of the host of Fingolfin. Seeing their own kin falling, and assuming the Teleri had attacked the Noldor under orders of the Valar to waylay the march of the Noldor, they become fierce and desperate, and thus many of the Teleri were slain and their ships were taken. Then the Noldor set off towards Middle-earth. Olva, king of the Teleri, called upon Ossé for aid, but he came not, for it was not permitted by the Valar that the flight of the Noldor should be hindered by force. But Wienan wept for the mariners of the Teleri and the sea arose in wrath against the slayers, so that many of the ships were wrecked and those in them drowned. Nonetheless, the greater part of the Noldor escaped, and when the storm passed, they held on their course, some by ships and some by land. 
After they had marched for a great while in the unmeasured night, they came at length to the northern confines of the guarded realm, upon the borders of the empty waste of Araman, which were mountainous and cold. There they beheld suddenly a dark figure standing high upon a rock that looked down upon the shore. Some say that it was Mandos himself. And they heard a loud voice, solemn and terrible, that made them stand. Then all halted and stood still, and from end to end of the hosts of the Noldor, the voice was heard speaking the curse and prophecy which is called the prophecy of the North and the doom of the Noldor. Tears are numbered, you shall share. And the Valar will fence Valinor against you and shut you out, so that not even the echo of your lamentation shall pass over the mountains. On the house of Feanor, the wrath of the Valar lieth from the west unto the uttermost east, and upon all that will follow them it shall be laid also. Their oath shall drive them, and yet betray them, and ever snatch away the very treasures that they have sworn to pursue. To evil ends shall all things turn that they begin well. And by treason of kin unto kin, and the fear of treason, shall this come to pass. But the dispossessed shall they be forever. He has spilled the blood of your kindred unrighteously, and has stained the land of Ammon. For blood he shall render blood. And beyond Ammon ye shall dwell in death's shadow, for though Eru appointed to you to die not in Ea, and no sickness may assail you, yet slain ye may be, and slain ye shall be, by weapon and by torment and by grief, and your houseless spirits shall come then to Mandos. There long shall ye abide, and yearn for your bodies, and find little pity, Though all whom you have slain should entreat for you, and those that endure in Middle-earth and come not to Mandos, shall grow weary of the world as with a great burden, and shall wane and become shadows of regret before the younger race that come up after the Valar have spoken. Upon hearing this, many of the Noldor, who did not partake in the kinslaying, including Finarfin, returned to Valinor to be pardoned by the Valar. But other Noldor, led by Fingolfin, some of whom were blameless, were determined to leave Valinor. Feanor took his sons and those who were most loyal to him and stole the boats so they could cross the sea first. Then, upon arriving in Middle-earth, Feanor burned the ships, ensuring they could not be sent back to Valinor. But since Arda was flat in that ancient time, Fingolfin saw the great burning of the ships and thus knew that Feanor had betrayed him. Nevertheless, the remainder of the Noldor decided that if they were to reach Middle-earth, they'd have to travel further north and cross the sea at the grinding ice, which cost them many lives along the way, as many perished in the crossing. And so, the Noldor, bearing the weight of their doom and burdened by the terrible kinslaying, forged ahead, enduring the perils of the lands and seas. Yet their resolve remained unyielding, fueled by a burning desire for vengeance. The stage was set for a great saga, where the war of the jewels would unfold and the echoes of their deeds would reverberate throughout the annals of Arda. <laughs> 